I need to have that moment when, when it clicks. Um, if I don't sense that three act structure, if I don't sense that undercurrent of a theme that I'm really that really moves me and stirs me, I don't do it. Even if it's I've got some fantastic elements, it has to sort of coalesce. When someone approaches me with a project, I'm incredibly open. They say, "What do you want to do?" I'll do anything. But I need that moment where it, where it clicks, where I can see how to tell that movie. In the case of uh, uh, the Stephen Hawking uh, movie, Theory of Everything, which was based on a biography by his ex-wife, Jane Hawking, this, about halfway through Jane's book, there was sort of revelations of a very intimate nature about their, their, the way they ran their marriage. And that was the eureka moment. I knew then we had enough ingredients to make a really interesting movie on, a, on an intellectual level and also on an emotional level. I was subsequently asked um, to do a movie on Albert Einstein and uh, a book by Isaacson arrived, a huge monster of a book. And I thought, well, this will be, a, excuse the pun, a no-brainer. Um, and uh, started reading This Great Life and I couldn't see the movie in it which taught me an interesting thing, that a great life doesn't necessarily make a great movie. And you would think that they would have to, right? But I couldn't see that, I couldn't see the shape of a movie in there. When you've got those words before a movie based on a true story, um, you've essentially established a contract with the audience that what they're gonna see is pretty much um, true. Now, then you have to start defining the word true, something that happened to a character when they're 50 and you're only dealing with a month in their life, you might want to bring it in and introduce it. Why? Because it's central to that character. Did it happen on that day as you've depicted it? No. Is it true? Yeah, it is. It's true on another level. Um, so in, in the case of uh, uh, Bohemian Rhapsody, the, the, the struggle with that was to find an antagonist. Here's a young guy, um, Indian Parsi, Born, uh, raised in Zanzibar, ends up in Feltham, a big dreamer, big buck teeth, not an especially great voice. The battle had to be with himself, and that was the realization that the antagonist, um, the force of opposition, the obstacle in Freddie's life was himself, um, and that unlocked that whole movie. Well, I'm I'm one of um, I'm one of seven children. I grew up in a house with seven kids, and. Uh, so this was a continual carnival of chaos. So weirdly, I like as much noise as possible. And, you know, I don't turn off the internet or anything like that. So I'm getting emails, being in the middle of stuff. Um, when I'm home alone, I'd like to turn on a TV and a radio and something about, t t I'll switch, hell, I'll switch on the vacuum cleaner just to sort of simulate the, the level of noise, noise. And so that's one of the good, good sort of byproducts of being in a shambolic uh, family atmosphere. It's an incredibly tricky job and we're, we're eternally apprentices in it. Um, every time you start a new project you go, oh my god, how, do, how am I going to crack this one? It's you, you and your id, your super ego, um, your ghosts, um, your past. Um, it's, it, you, yeah, you're wrestling with things within yourself, you're wrestling within the, all the challenges that the story poses, you're, you're wrestling with all the challenges that the form um, imposes, but you, you start, it's always just about going, well, I know how I'll do that scene, and I know how I'll do that scene. And then you go, now, now, okay, now the job is slightly less in intimidating, now I just have to get from that to that. And, and I've found as I've gone on in my career, you have an increasing confidence that you will get there in the end. And you're not so alarmed when the first dra draft is absolute crap, which when you're starting, you think this, it's, you, you render an ultimate verdict on yourself that the first draft is crap, that I'm no good. I think one of the biggest challenges I faced and probably everyone faces in this business is rejection. Um, it seems to be an industry built on rejection. You have to keep working, keep working, keep knocking on doors and, and be, you know, be insanely determined. Um, somehow, you know, suffer the slings and arrows and put those behind you and keep faith in yourself. And it's great to have people around you as well. And, um, and do everything, say yes to everything. You can take what seems to be quite a small amount of ability and giftedness and turn it into something really interesting. If you place upon yourself sustained creative pressure 
to go beyond what you think you can do. It's amazing. I, I actually think that, that we can grow those parts of the brain and, um, and you make, make yourself talented, quite literally.